Hey everyone and welcome. Last time I started my dividend portfolio with just $100 and I also showed you what kind of goals I was setting for it. Today we'll look at how that dividend portfolio performed over the last month, what changes I've made and what I've bought with my new $100 that I've put into it. Also I'll take a look at some of the screeners that I use to pick out stocks. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, we are actually making a profit <laughs> and it's a very, very tiny profit of just seven cents, but we are in the green. And if you remember from the last video, we actually started at about minus three dollars or something. So we've actually done quite well and I'm very pleased with how it's turning out so far. Obviously, that's a very short time span and you shouldn't be expecting any miracles to happen, but it's still nice to see green. So let's take a look at what I've done with my new $100 that I've put into the portfolio. So if we go into manual trades, we can see the last trades that I've done. And obviously, like I mentioned, my main priority was building a big position in the Charles Schwab Dividend ETF, SCHD. So as we can see here, I actually bought another $20 of that ETF and it's actually been doing quite well. We have 1.7% profit since I bought it, which is quite good. I also bought some more of the Invesco QQQ ETF, which mirrors the Nasdaq, and that's done really well. As you can see, 4.35% profit on that one. I bought a bit more of the Vanguard Value ETF, and again, that's gone up by 1.3%, which is good. I also bought $20 in the Williams companies, and that's also done okay. Uh, we can see that we have 1.8% profit on that already. And this company I haven't actually covered in my channel yet, but it's actually a very good dividend growth company. I've also opened a position in Realty Income, which I've actually covered in my latest video. And Realty Income is a very good monthly dividend stock. It's a rate, so it's basically a real estate investment trust and it invests in retail locations. It has somewhere about 12,000 retail locations in the US and Europe, so that's, that's a lot. Unfortunately, we've lost 3 cents to that position, so a 0.3% loss so far. Then we have Lego in general, which is the UK retirement company that I was talking about in my previous video as well. It has a very good dividend yield, it is stable, so it is perfect for a dividend portfolio in my opinion. And then we have Cisco, which again I covered in a video of mine a few weeks ago, I think. Um, and I've opened a small position there, just $10, and as you can see, we've already made one cent on it. So, you know, we're making it rain. And finally, I have the S&P Energy ETF, XLE, and we've actually made a 1.5% profit on that so far, which is good to see. Looking at the best performing stock so far, the number one is Altria Group. And that's really nice to see actually because it is also probably the biggest dividend payer in the portfolio and it also is returning the most in terms of capital so now I'm just wishing I had actually put a bit more in it but still I'll take it 4.3% in just 3 or 4 weeks that's a very good return I just hope the price stays the same or goes up the next best performer so far is the Williams companies in fact I think this stock had jumped to up to plus 5% at some point but it did fall down over the last week so that's okay and Philip Morris has also been doing fine 1.5% almost again not bad the worst performing investment is the Invesco QQQ but again I think that's just because I had an open position from before there and I think that was at about you can see it was at about minus 21% so the positions that I've actually opened since I started this portfolio are doing very well at 4.4% and 8.2% which is again not bad it's I opened that on the 17th of January and it is the 14th of February today so in just under a month it has returned 8.2% which is very good my iShares bond ETF hasn't done too well. We can see that I've lost 8 cents on it or 0.8%. And in fact, it actually gave me my first dividend of this portfolio so far. And you can see it here. It's 1 cent. 1 cent. It's something. I know. It's not a lot, but it's something. The only problem that I found with eToro is that it's really hard to tell when you've been paid the dividend. So even though I have one cent here, which I know it's a dividend because I had invested everything. If I go to my history, it's not going to tell me anything and it doesn't give me anything. 
And in order to actually see that I've been paid a dividend, I need to go to my account statement. I need to say, okay, it's gonna be this year, year to date. I'll check the account statement and I will see that I've actually received <laughs> one cent in dividends. We can actually see the breakdown of the dividends in this dividend uh, section here at the top right. And we can see that the withholding tax rate is 30%. I did fill out my W8 Ben form, but I guess it hadn't taken effect when this dividend got paid out. So my withholding tax rate was 30%, which is a lot if you think about it. Getting taxed 30% on your dividend before even receiving it is a lot. And this is actually one of the reasons why I prefer UK stocks in, when it comes to dividend. Um, unfortunately, American stocks tend to be a bit more dividend growth oriented. The UK stocks, they tend to pay a percentage of their free cash flow. Um, so they just approach paying dividends a bit differently. But if you think about it, 30% withholding tax rate, um, and this should fall down to 15% after the W8 Ben form takes effect. You know, if you have a company that pays 10% in, in the US, you're essentially getting a 7% dividend. Whereas in the UK, you could be getting 8%, but you will get the 8%. So that's something to think about when you're buying dividend stocks, especially if you're based in the UK. I don't know how it works if you're a US citizen. Maybe you don't get this withholding tax rate, but you can tell me in the comments below. Now, let's just take a look at the dividend breakdown in my portfolio. Right now, like I mentioned, we have 3.53% dividend yield, which is growing at an average of 7.4%, which is very good to see. My goal was between 5 and 7% dividend yield and I think that we may be able to hit that by the end of the year. And even if we don't hit them, the important thing is that the dividend is growing so over time I'm hoping that it will eventually jump up to 5 to 7%. But for right now it's okay to be at 3.5% and it is a starting point and we're getting there. So the most important thing here is that the biggest positions in my portfolio are also the positions that grow their dividend the most. So my biggest position is the Schwab Dividend ETF and we can see that over the last 5 years the dividend has grown by roughly 14% annualized and this is really good. Why? Well, because that means in the next 5 years if we assume that the dividend will grow at roughly the same pace, we may expect a dividend yield on cost of about 6.6%. Obviously that's assuming I don't buy any more of the ETF, but I will be buying it. So it will be a bit less, but it will still grow and that's the important bit here. The second biggest position is the Invesco QQQ Trust and again that grows very fast at 10.4%. Unfortunately it does have a lower dividend yield, so even in 5 years it's probably not gonna be that massive. But the main reason why I bought the Invesco QQQ Trust in the first place was to balance out my portfolio a bit and provide some growth to it as well. And then we can see that Lego in general is not growing that fast but they do have an already very big dividend. Like I mentioned last time, I don't know why it's showing it as 5.2% because they do have a dividend of 7 or 7.3%, somewhere around that. Um, and also, like I mentioned, it is a UK company and UK companies tend to approach dividends a bit differently from US companies. And then obviously we can see that the other positions that I have are also quite fast growers. So 8%, 7.7%, 7.2%. These are all really good and these kind of fit my goals. As I mentioned, I was looking for stocks or positions that grow their dividends by about 5% and that is the case here. We have a few exceptions like Philip Morris and Cisco and Realty Income as well but I just think they're overall good companies at a good price right now which is why I've bought them. When it comes to picking out dividend stocks the best screener that I found so far is the Seeking Alpha stock screener. The problem here is that it is paid so if you don't have a premium membership to Seeking Alpha you probably won't be able to use it but if you do have that, it is a very, very useful tool. The cool thing about the Seeking Alpha stock screener is that it does have quite a lot of different variables when it comes to dividend. So we can take a look at the forward dividend yield, the four year average yield, the payout ratio, how much the dividend has grown over the last three or five years, how many years of growth we have actually seen. So if we just take a look at these, go done. We can actually adjust our filters so going forward i want a company that is paying at least say three percent dividend yield i want the average dividend yield over the last four years to be at least 
um, I want the payout ratio to be somewhere between well at least zero because if it's negative that means that they have negative earnings typically the downside here is that I cannot really go above 60% which is a bit annoying because some companies especially real estate investment trusts they will go to about 80 90 percent and that's okay in that specific industry unfortunately here is just capping you to 60 percent so we'll go with that for now we want to look at some dividend growth companies so we're gonna say at least three percent dividend growth over the last three years and also at least three percent dividend growth over the last five years I will also disable this default filter that Seeking Alpha gives us because the quant rating is not that important in my opinion. I've noticed that it really prioritizes companies that are momentum companies or ones that have had EPS revisions. So I will disable this for now because that's not really what I'm looking at. And finally, I will also add a filter for market cap because as I said, I don't really want to be investing in small companies. So I will say at least 1 billion market cap or more. We'll just move it. There we go, 1.02 billion. And there we have it. We have 16 stocks that match our criteria. And just something I want to share with you, you shouldn't base your entire research on just screeners. That's a mistake that some people do. You really should read about the company that you're buying because some companies like HP, for example, they may look very good on paper, but there are actually a lot of problems with the business. And even though Seeking Alpha is telling us that it's greatly valued and it's super profitable and that it has a very good dividend, well, just be careful and do your research. And this is the Seeking Alpha stock screener. The other one, which I found, which I think is the best free dividend stock screener, is Market Beats. I will put the link to these dividend screeners in the description below, so make sure you take a look. When it comes to the Market Beat dividend screener, it is kind of limited in the sense that you don't really get a lot of things around price to earnings, price to book, you don't get anything to do with the company's health, forward expectations and so on, but you can screen based on the dividend, which I guess is what we're looking for and it gives us kind of a good selection of companies that we can then go in and further research. So again, if for example, I look for companies with over 3% dividend yield, less than 90% payout ratio, um, three year dividend growth, let's say again, 3%, at least 10 years of dividend growth and then we sort them by market cap yeah let's do that the one thing that i don't like here as well is that the market cap it only gives us a very specific choice so mid cap large cap mega cap it would be nice if i can just sort for any companies that are above 2 billion but they don't really give us this option so instead i will just sort the results by market cap and i will just ignore the smallest ones so let's just take a look at what it gives us right now and there we have it there are 93 companies that match our dividend criteria the biggest one is chevron going down to upbeat then broadcom pfizer united parcel service and so on so in this video i won't actually be analyzing any sort of companies but if you want me to do that in the next video let me know in the comments below and so that was it for today's video i hope you liked it i hope you see how over time the portfolio starts to develop and how last time we only had 9 positions, now we have 12 positions with double the size of the portfolio really in cash value and we've actually started to see some green, some profit which is obviously the best part of having a portfolio I was expecting to see a loss actually but I'm quite happy with how it turned out so yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like, leave a comment, share it with your friends and subscribe thanks for watching again and I will talk to you again soon